T to me, it's about that sense of connection with the land and the landscape and following the seasons and um, being deeply rooted in that space. To me, is it, it, it very, very important. And I suppose from my training, because I trained with Obod, we have three strands that I still follow in my own life with the bardic, the creative, uh, artistic piece. Uh, I'm a storyteller. But when I started my bardic training, I didn't regard myself as a storyteller or I, I couldn't play an instrument, although I'd learnt in school very badly. And I certainly wasn't a poet or anything like that. And through that process, not that I actually, nobody taught me how to tell stories. That was, I suppose, called out in me. Uh, and I do, and I absolutely love um, telling stories. So when I'm doing the training here, we don't teach people how to write poetry or tell stories. Somehow, through the experiences and the exercise they do, and connecting with the landscape, connecting with the elements, I'm always fascinated at how people can write and what's called forth. There's some magical creative process that happens, and we call the uh, imbus here, that um, divine uh, inspiration that comes from Bridget, goddess, Boan, the landscape, that brings that out in people. So what's interesting is that we're not, Druidy doesn't teach you how to do things. It provides a space with exercises for you to engage with, if you wish, if you don't. And somehow there's a process that, um, alchemical process, magical process that calls out, calls you out and to follow a particular path or a particular awareness. That that's what it's about rather than teaching you what to do and how to do it. It just happens. But the, what we call it here is the filler, which is the Irish word for poet, seer. And um, again, having time, spending time with nature, meditating, journeying with plants. Uh, what I liked about it was the, the training I had wasn't around um, plant medicine or uh, it, it wasn't like a herbal pharmacological approach. It was your personal relationship with the plant. Um, either you take it medicinally or work with it metaphysically. And that made it very accessible to me. So what is my uh, relationship with the dandelion, for example? So we may look like it as a diuretic. It's got vitamin D and it's got potassium in or whatever it is. But also look at how it grows. Uh, I learned a lovely story from uh, Ruth Marshall about how the dandelion came to be. Uh, it has the sun, the moon and the stars. So you have the sun, the flower, and then you have the star shaped leaves and then you have the moon and the, the clock. Um, and how tenacious plants can be and how you can learn from how they are in the, in the, in the landscape. We have a lot of ivy here. And uh, so we have trailing ivy and we have the other ivy and the ivy that clings to the trees. And all of the leaves are different shaped depending on where they are. So that tells us about how you can express yourself differently depending on the environment you're in. Mm -hmm. How you can find uh, rootedness in very, uh, I suppose, hospitable landscapes, but also in hostile landscapes. If you look at the, bla the bramble and how tenacious that is, how it can find roots anywhere. So we can learn a lot from plants. And that's what the, the ovate or the filler piece is about, not just about the, 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 the pharmacological or the properties of it. It's that engagement with it and how we can learn so much from the, the plant world.